After almost half a year of waiting, the 24th major update for Ravenfield was released, and I think this was definitely worth the wait. The Citadel map got completed, so it's no longer got the work in progress next to it when selecting map and instant action. We finally got some love to the in-game map editor. AI improvements, of course. The airplanes have some amazing improvements to them. We also got some optimization, which is always a welcome addition, especially for people like me who have you know lower-end PCs, and input improvements of all things, uh, even for controllers. So if you're one of the few people who play Ravenfield with a controller, it probably will work a bit better, but uh, I don't have any controller, so I can't test this out. So let's uh, unpack all of this stuff, shall we? For this, I'm going to talk about the airplanes first. Unsurprisingly, we got some new models for them, for both the attack plane and the bomber plane. And aside from just looking better, it's functionally way better than before. We have an updated heads-up display for the planes. The attack plane has better handling now, and it's been balanced now that the machine gun in it has a larger ammo capacity, but at the cost of some damage, though I doubt you'll probably notice this in a fight. The bomber plane now has a new stabilized turret on it, which should make hitting targets easier, and we got one of the best addition for planes yet, the ability to land safely. And best of all, it even works with modded planes. Now onto the main focus of the update, the Citadel. No, not that one, this one. Like Steel Raven said, it's been fully overhauled. The Citadel itself now has a runway for airplanes to take off from and land thanks to what I mentioned earlier. The attackers, instead of having one spawn, now have two on both sides of the bridge. Speaking of bridges, the bridge connecting Overlook and Bunker has been removed, so now that there are two separate attack lanes to the Citadel. Emphasis on separate. Back to spawns. The attackers have one tank and one APC, as opposed to, I believe, two for both before. They also have an attack helicopter, which should come in handy. The defenders have the runway, so that means they'll, they'll have their planes. The village area has also got some attention, and it has a little dock area for boats to go. The HQ building at the Citadel got a remake, and it looks way better, and it's even got some prompts inside of it to give it a sort of office feel. And unfortunately, no, the chairs do not change depending on who initially owns the Citadel checkpoint. They always stay red. Trees now have vis occluders, which I assume are functionally the same as a funk occluder from the source engine, which just hide prompts, but not world geometry. And the prompts in this case are the trees. And on the topic of trees, there are now trees and rocks scattered about to break up sightlines outside of the citadel. Other changes to the citadel map that aren't mentioned in the changelog are the bunker area has been changed drastically, and there is a little easter egg that I discovered when flying around in photo mode. In the Citadel HQ, on the bottom floor, if you go in this closed door, there is a tree. Now you might see something in the leaves, and if you get a better angle of it, you can actually see what it is. It's a spinning helicopter. Interesting. I assume this is like the model that Steel Raven is planning to use for the new attack helicopters. 
assuming, you know, we're getting new attack helicopters, but, I mean, come on, we got the model right here, why wouldn't we? It's probably going to come in the next update. Alright, so now on to the AI. Unfortunately for this section, I wasn't able to get any good visual aids for some of the stuff. Anyways, I'll only go over things that you have a pretty good chance of seeing in-game. Bots now prefer cover points with ceiling protection since it protects them better against explosions, mortars, air-to-ground attacks, and stuff like that. In order to see this in your custom maps with the in-game editor, you will have to regenerate the nav mesh, which you can do by just playing or saving your map and ticking this box, but you probably already knew that. One of the changes that I appreciate the most is now if a bot accidentally misses their target with an explosive weapon, friendly fire damage will be reduced by, I would assume, anywhere from like 25 to 75%. So this finally stops issues where your own teammates would shoot you dead because their aim is worse than yours. And there is a reduced risk of bot friendly fire with explosion weapons whenever they're using cover. So now the problem is not even likely to happen at all. If you shoot an enemy, then his aim will be a bit rubbish for a bit. Now, one change that I'm not too happy about is bots have updated airplane swerving. So bots are now less likely to crash into a target that they're engaging. Like, I can understand why this change was made, but at the same time, when it did happen, it was pretty funny, so, you know, you could generally excuse it. Bots will now be slightly less accurate after uncrouching, and lastly, bots will now keep track of their targets for a few seconds even if they temporarily go out of sight. This applies to high priority targets, such as vehicle capturing, a flag, or a target assigned by the player. Bots on turrets will keep track of targets if they are their preferred target type. Bots on airplanes will always keep track of targets. This makes them more aggressive and use their weapons way more. Now, the next section may be a bit boring, but if you have a lower end PC, you may want to hear all of it. Official maps now have optimized terrain rendering. This has two effects, one being there is reduced CPU overhead when rendering terrain on official maps. Emphasis on official maps, this is not for custom maps, official maps only. And the other effect being that there is a bit more pop in, but it's a decent trade off I suppose. Bots behind the player won't have their weapons rendered because, you know, you can't see it. And lastly, bots have that little smirk baked into their material, which is not the same as a texture, by the way. Anyways, this reduces draw calls from 2 to 1. For my testing, this had no performance impact whatsoever. Finally, now on to my favorite part of the update, the map editor. This was introduced all the way back in Early Access 16, and it's gotten some small additions here and there, but not to this degree. And before I pass out from excitement, let's just take a look at what Stuart Raven has blessed us in-game map creators with. We are able to change the ambient lights for both day and night versions of the map. We've got post-processing presets for maps we can mess around with. Sun and moon positions can be changed, as well as their pitch. The skybox has atmosphere parameters that can be changed. We have water volumes, which are just blocks of water that can be resized and allow you to have water higher than the ocean level. And speaking of the ocean level, you can change that too. Level detail parameter changes will be shown in real time, so you don't have to play the map in order to see them. You can use night vision in the map editor. We got all the props from the Citadel remake and tree models. So many tree models. Other stuff that we got that wasn't mentioned is the windmill from Island, the camo net from Canyon, and the updated wyvern plane along with, I believe, the original attack plane or the bomber plane. And these aren't vehicles, by the way. These are the props that have their wings folded up. My god. So much stuff for all us non-unity mappers to mess around with. And now Lightning Inferno can rest well knowing that he got his precious tree models. Well, except for that one, but I'm probably like the only person who knew of its existence up until this point. Okay, for the last section, we have the miscellaneous improvements. Now, since there is so much stuff here, like with the AI, I'll only talk about the stuff that you'll most likely see in-game. The two unfinished levels, Tunnel and Twin Islands, have been moved to the bottom of the map list. If you are in a vehicle with passengers and you change seats, you will switch seats with the passenger. So if you're in a bomber and you're sick and tired of being the pilot, you can just switch seats with the turret operator. And this also applies to every other vehicle as well. And if you get in a vehicle as the driver with bots already in there, they'll automatically join your squad. And if there was a driver already in there, he gets his ass kicked out and makes his own squad in retaliation. But if you join as a passenger, none of the bots will join your squad, so you can continue to ride as a temporary passenger. At least that's how Steel Ribbon puts it. Are you one of the lucky PC gamers out there who has a monitor with a resolution higher than 1080p? Well, not only do you get to flex on me, but now the user interface has some scaling to make stuff like choosing spawn points easier. And as an added bonus, the minimap gets its resolution doubled. I think a better solution to this is to use a UI scaler that can be changed like in Unturned or Minecraft, but if you go with the Unturned UI scaler, make sure you have a key bind to reset it to its default value in case you forget a decimal point in something like 1.50, because let's be real, a 150 times UI scale is good for no one. Official levels now have post-processing, and turrets on official levels will now use that stabilized mounted turret script that the bomber plane uses, 
and mounted turret cameras have recoil, so no longer do you shoot it like it's a goddamn laser. And those updated turret cameras have updated impact effects. Attack helicopters have been made more agile, and we got another eye candy setting, that being high dynamic range. Spec Ops also got some changes, but they were thrown in with the miscellaneous changes, so I decided I'll group them up here. The x helicopter can now be a custom helicopter, but if it can't support your squad, then the default one is used instead. Flares shot by enemies will fade out more smoothly. If for some reason you don't choose a primary weapon, the game will still start as normally. And there are now distant labels for checkpoints, which is measured in meters, and they'll show up when using the objective menu with and without the map. And the objective markers now have outlines, so you can see them better with brighter backgrounds. And lastly, the x helicopter can no longer be ordered by the player. Now, this is the part where I would mention bugs, but, um, no. There's, uh, there's no bugs that I discovered in this update, so... It's so good on you still, Raven. Anyways, I think that's everything. Of course, I didn't mention everything because of reasons I've already stated, but if there was something major that I did miss, comment down below, and I will have the change along linked in the description, just so you can tell me what I did miss. And as always, I will see you guys next Friday, or sooner.